I'm joined today by Dr. Kyle Pearson, a reconstructive foot and ankle surgeon with Morris Hospital Orthopedic Specialists. Dr. Pearson treats adults and children with common to advanced foot and ankle problems using both non-surgical and surgical treatment procedures. Dr. Pearson sees patients in the Morris Joliet and Ottawa offices. Appointments can be made with Dr. Pearson by calling 815-942-4875. Great to have you on here as we want to spend a little bit of time talking uh, foot and ankle uh, issues. Uh, I guess a good place to start, I think uh, at some point probably everybody's uh, sprained their ankle. Uh, tell us a bit about ankle sprains. Yeah, so ankle sprains is one of the more common things I see in the office. And it's, you know, traditionally uh, individuals think of an athlete that comes in with a sprain. But you'd be surprised other individuals just out for walks, certainly with you know, weather changing and stuff as well. Um, and certainly with ice, you know, coming in the, the winter can definitely be a lot of uh, ankle, you know, sprains and injuries. And it's it's something that, you know, we, you know, in the past said, oh, you'll get over it, you'll get better. Um, but a lot of times, you know, getting treatment earlier on uh, with these, uh, we catch, you know, a lot of other problems and prevent them from becoming uh, worse problems down the road. So kind of the whole thought process of treating these has, has changed a little bit to, you know, to try to get in and seek care and, and make sure we're kind of protecting the ankle while it heals and, uh, you know, in a more properly lying position. So that's really been, uh, been, a, been a paradigm shift for change for these, these ankle sprains that a lot of people sustain. All right. So, and let me ask you, any truth? I mean, I think we've all heard this. Sometimes uh, a sprain is almost worse than a break. Is that, uh, is that an accurate statement to make? Good question. You know, the, 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 the good or bad with a, a sprain is they can linger and they can take some time, you know, to heal. But mm. uh, good news is that we can, you know, certainly if we catch them early enough, they can they can heal with non-surgical treatment. But they can take, you know, four to six weeks or so to really start making a turn. So it can sure. be a frustrating process. Now, gotcha. bone, in a sense, takes more, you know, six to eight weeks to heal. So, you know, in, in all truth, you know, the, the fracture or the bone injury per Mother Nature's rules just takes longer to heal. But I think some people just kind of think in the back of their mind, oh, it's just a sprain, it'll get better. And the problem is sometimes when they push through it, that's when, you know, can then take a little bit longer than a fracture to heal because, you know, they keep, you know, re-injuring that ligament or the soft tissue around the ankle. Sure. And then it can, you know, then we're having to kind of start from scratch. Right, gotcha. What about the ankle arthritis? A uh, good question. That's kind of more of uh, a sequela that can be due to, in the most common sense, uh, it's, it's due to uh, traumatic injury, such as a fracture um, or multiple ankle sprains that just aren't taken care of. And the cartilage, we kind of talked, uh, uh, we talk cartilage in a sense of a brake pad per se. Over time, that brake pad, you know, can wear down, mm -hmm. and when that brake pad is worn down. You know, your, your body uh, then will swell up. It'll it'll cause more pain with activities. And the good news is now in the area we have uh, more treatment options than before to assist with treating uh, ankle arthritis, which is which is exciting. All right. Well, I, now I imagine too, with the worst case scenario situations, uh, you do total ankle replacements. Is that right? That's correct. So that, that's one nice thing that they will do, uh, bring to the area. But good thing is a lot of times, you know, we're, we're very successful with non-surgical. So I don't want patients to, you know, kind of think right off the bat, oh, you know, I just have to jump to surgery. There's good non-surgical options, um, such as oral anti-inflammatories, even injections that we utilize an x-ray machine to confirm the medicines being delivered in the right spot. Sometimes we have to use braces or different things to kind of help uh, protect the ankle and calm it down. But if it does come to surgery, um, there's a wide gamut that we're able to provide, such as, you know, an ankle scope, like a traditional cleanup, like a knee scope, um, all the way to an ankle fusion for some individuals that seem to work well. And then we are able to offer an ankle joint uh, replacement, kind of like a knee and a hip replacement that's come a long way. And we've had good success with being able to provide that treatment in the area. Again, though, like I said, probably worst case scenario or, or maybe like a, a catastrophic uh, injury or something like that or, or a catastrophic trauma is the only kind of time when it's even considered, well, it's, it's got to be replaced right off the bat, right? Yeah, very rare do we do kind of something right off the bat for mm -hmm. ankle replacement, and unlike a, you know, like a hip per se. With ankles, it's more kind of a sequela from an injury, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. more kind of down-the-road process. So if someone has a bad injury, 
and then they develop really bad arthritis, that's when we can kind of have a chat. Okay, you seem like a good fit. This could be a good treatment option gotcha. for you uh, to keep the motion, you know, uh, within the ankle. Uh, and, and, and so far we've had good, you know, right around the studies are showing good uh, overall success uh, 10 years or uh, so without having to possibly have, you know, either um, the piece that sits in between the implant uh, that provides some cushion called a poly uh, that sometimes needs to be exchanged. Uh, but the, the newer studies coming out now are showing, you know, really good longevity compared to what they used to for the ankle replacement. All right. Well, now, in addition to uh, an ankle sprain, what are some other foot and ankle sports injuries? Uh, good question. So there's, uh, you know, injuries that happen uh, within the foot, such as a uh, loose frank injury that we take care of quite a bit. Um, there's other fractures that we've seen, whether it's, you know, from, you know, fifth metatarsal fractures or ankle fractures that I take care of uh, a lot. Also, work-related injuries uh, we see quite a bit of as well. And then we also take care of individuals with um, other ailments, such as heel pain, like plantar fasciitis. We see those individuals and help out, um, in addition as well with bunion and hammer toe deformities. So we kind of, you know, fortunately able to kind of help out with the full gamut of uh, foot and ankle pathology or problems uh, for people in the area. All right. Well, Doctor, thanks for spending some time with our listeners. Certainly appreciated. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Dr. Kyle Pearson. Dr. Pearson's special interests include foot and ankle injuries, fractures, arthritic joint conditions, bunions, hammer toe deformities, heel pain, plantar fasciitis, diabetic foot and ankle conditions, wound care, ganglion and soft tissue tumors, and custom inserts. His advanced training in foot and ankle surgery includes foot and ankle reconstruction, midfoot and hindfoot fusion, ankle arthroscopy, total ankle replacement, tendon transfers and repair, wound healing, external fixation, and diabetic limb salvage. To learn more about Dr. Pearson, go to morrishospital.org, click on orthopedics and sports medicine. Appointments may be made with Dr. Pearson by calling 815-942-4875.